Welcome to chapter 12 of the book of Ecclesiastes, the last chapter. Uh, I've had a three-week uh, hiatus. I caught with RSV, upper respiratory uh, infection, and I wasn't able to do uh, the uh, seminars for the last three weeks. And I thank you for the ones out there that are praying for me. And uh, we're going to continue here with the uh, last chapter, and then we're going to go and finalize the going through the Old, old and New Testament uh, with the Song of Solomon next. In chapter 12, Solomon, who basically lived for 58 or 59 years, not real long, is, has written uh, this book in, I believe, in old age, because he sees a lot of the futility of life. If he was young in writing this at the beginning of his life, he would have probably written it quite differently. Uh, life's experiences in youth uh, start off, well, pretty much with going to grammar school, looking forward to going to school, and then uh, you get a little bit older. After you go to high school, you're looking for your first car to drive around. Graduating from high school, then uh, going to college, you're looking at a, the church that you go to and the people that you know. You're involved in sports. You're a male, some a lot of females also today, uh, involved in sports, either uh, participating or uh, being an observer on the TV and so forth, getting involved in your team, all excited about that. <clears throat> then you have adventures in life that are coming up, a bicycle trip or a car trip, going hunting, traveling, and so forth. Then you're looking forward to your first job, which is all exciting. And then your first love in your life, if a male or a female, uh, the opposite sex draws you uh, to them. And first love uh, has a strong, powerful um, influence on youth. We have songs, especially back when I was younger, not so much today, but when I was younger, songs about first love and broken relationships and uh, so forth back in the 40s, 50s, and 60s, very strong. Then you're excited about when you meet someone to get married and to have children. Then your business or your employment uh, is very important to make money to pay for your family. You're involved in politics, trying to change the bad things that are going on with government to something better, but you may be um, waylaid because of a war with your country, which is another unbelievable, it, it's an exciting experience, although one we wouldn't want to experience. So this is all, these are examples of if Solomon would have written this book when he was young, he would have had a different outlook, written it a different way. But uh, life's experiences in old age, which apparently he was going into, uh, we see things differently. Uh, we don't have the challenges as in youth, pretty much in a holding pattern to stay healthy uh, in your retirement. Hopefully you don't have any health issues, but they unfortunately they will and do pop up uh, to everyone. Then uh, you find out that over the years, the things that you have done that were exciting and involved in, like politics, you've maybe, have, like me, have voted for someone and they always lose. So it's like, well, what's the, what's the, uh, what's the use? Uh, I, nobody's ever won that I think I voted for. And then uh, <clears throat> sports. When you, it was important when you're younger, but then when you get older, it's like, well, you know, what? Who cares 
uh, what the football team, your college football team does. Does it really matter? Do you remember from one year to the next? And then you can be in the situation of having your family and friends uh, gone, uh, dying, and you're left pretty much alone in your old age, not anyone coming to see you sitting at home, and possibly your health has caused uh, you that you can't drive, no transportation, pretty much housebound, and looking towards the end. And I believe this is the situation that Solomon has. It begins in verse 1, the end of the whole matter. And remember the one creating you in the days of your youth, and that's the first part I was mentioning, until whenever the days of evil should not come and years should arrive in which you shall say, there is not in me a want for them. So change life change, you're older. Until of which the sun and the light uh, are not darkened, nor the moon and the stars, nor uh, the clouds after the rain. In a day in whichever the keepers of the house should be shaken and men of power should be turned aside and the grinding women are all idle because they are made few and the women looking by the openings uh, shall darken and shall lock the doors in the market and weakness of the sound of the women grinding and one shall rise up to the sound of the sparrow and all the daughters of song shall be humbled. It sounds pretty bleak. And indeed, from the height uh, they shall see even stupefactions in the way, and the and then uh, the almond shall bloom. The stupefactions. I thought that was an interesting word. Uh, what stupefactions in Luke four thirty six? It says, and there became a stupefaction upon all, and they conversed together with one another, saying, Well, what word is this that with authority and power he gives orders to the unclean spirits, and they come forth? And the stupefaction of these people uh, of seeing what God can do, Jesus could do. Then in Luke 5, 9, it says, For a stupefaction compassed him and all the ones with him over the catch of the fishes, which they seized. I think that was Peter, James, and John. When they saw it, there was a stupefaction. In Acts 3.10, it says, And they were filled with stupefaction and astonishment over the things, a thing having happened to him. And that was the lame man at the temple, uh, having been told to arise by uh, Peter, I think, and John. So people, it says, and indeed from the height, they shall see even stupefactions in the way. Now, is Solomon predicting the things of Christ? I think so. And the almond shall bloom, and the locust shall thicken, and the caper shall be dispersed, because man went to his eternal house. Where that would be, Hades, Sheol in the Hebrew, and The ones beating their chests in mourning circled uh, in the market. Uh, Until whenever the line of silver should be prostrated and the flower ornament of gold should be broken and the water picture should be broken at the spring and the wheel should have rolled unto the pit. Things happen. Uh, This is uh, life all these different things. I thought, uh, the, what is it talking about? The line of silver should be prostrated. Um, the, the word uh, skinion, 4979, has many applications in the Bible. And uh, in Exodus 3518 and 3940, it talks about these lines holding up the shrouds of the tent. And in Esther 1 6, the lines held up the curtains at the wedding feast. Then lines are measure, are mentioned in 2 Samuel 8, 2 and 17, 3, 
Psalm 16, 7, Amos 7, 17, and Micah 2, 4, for a measuring line they laid down, the people on one side would be uh, slain and the people on the other side would live. Now, uh, so uh, the prostrated line of silver. Uh, and then in Second Samuel, it mentions uh, cords, which are the same things, or the line, cords of Hades encircled me, and shackles of death anticipated me. Now, the, the line of um, going into death uh, could be what it's talking about. Job 36.6 says, And the ones being shackled in manacles shall be held together by rough cords of poverty. And the rough cords uh, is the same thing as the line. There is a line of inheritance that mentions in Psalm 78.56. And the lines were used for trapping and snares. Psalms 119.62 and Psalm 146. The lines held up the mast of ships. It mentions that in Isaiah 33, 23, and Acts 27, 32. The rough cords were used to let down and haul up Jeremiah when he was in the pit in Jeremiah chapter 38. And then in Zechariah 2, 1, it talks about a surveying line. They put knots in it for every, like if it would be a foot, and then they, every foot they have, and then they would use that to measure. And then in the New Testament in John 2.15, it says, and having made a scourge out of rough cords, uh, he cast out all from the temple, and that's Jesus uh, casting them out. He made it out of the rough cords. Now, it continued then, uh, and the flower ornament of gold should be broken. Don't know what that actually is. And the water pitcher should be broken at the spring. Um, I thought the water picture in John 4.28, it mentions the woman uh, then left her water pitcher and went forth into the city, the woman of Samaria. And the wheel should have rolled unto the pit, and this could be over the grave. And the dust shall return upon the earth as it was, and the spirit should return to the God who gave it. And that is death, and we return to God, however way it was that he saw uh, back uh, 2,500, 2,600, 700 years ago. Folly of follies, again, said the assemblyman, all things are folly. See, he's looking back. And it was extra that the assemblyman became wise. So I believe this was Solomon because he mentions his wisdom and he was a king earlier, I think in verse chapter 1. And he taught knowledge with man and that he shall trace composed parables, and Solomon wrote uh, the book of um, Proverbs. The assemblyman, uh, uh, I'm sorry, it was extra that the assemblyman became wise and taught knowledge with man, uh, wise in the word and teaching it, and then he shall trace composed parables, and um, being wise in the word of God and teaching it is it was extra to him. This is, but we shouldn't be extra to us. Something that we do become wise in the word. The assemblyman sought much to find a wanting of words and writing of uprightness of words of truth. He wanted to. He liked, enjoyed writing, Unless, and then the words of the wise ones are as the ox goads, and as nails firmly planted, uh, ones which by agreement were given from out of one shepherd, and the wise words, ox goads, sort of uh, something that sticks you, and you know this is a wise word, I should be doing it, nails firmly planted. Now I was trying to, by, by uh, agreement, which 
were given from out of one shepherd. I was trying to figure out what exactly is it talking about here, so I looked up nails, and I saw in John 20, 25, it says, unless I should see in his hands, and this is doubting Thomas, one of Jesus' disciples, saying, uh, unless I should see in his hands the impression of the nails, and should put my finger into the impression of the nails, and should put my hand into his side, in no way shall I believe. The one shepherd, uh, the nails. And, O my son, guard extra from them. To make many scrolls, there is not a limit, and much meditation is weariness of the flesh. And uh, there are a lot of things that are writing. People today really enjoy writing with the Internet. Anybody can write and get it out right away. Anybody can see it. And there's no limit to what's going on and being written. Uh, But there's much meditation is weariness of the flesh. And meditating... Um, I think about not necessarily meditating in the Word, but I see these people that go on these retreats of other religions, and they um, meditate, get into a meditating stage, and it becomes a weariness to the flesh. You're not really accomplishing uh, anything, really, in the long run. It could be hurting your flesh. And then he cont- continues and says, The end of all the matter here. Fear God and keep his commandments. Fearing God is what he's coming up as something that we all should be doing and reading his word, keeping the commandments and the commandments of Jesus are different than the commandments of the book of Moses. For this is to all man. For all action, God shall lead into judgment, in all being looked over, if good and if evil. And as I mentioned, in the experience of life is a test, and the test is given to us. Jesus says to pray not to be, uh, do not put me into the test. And so we can ask God not to test us, but he does, and many different ways anyway, tested Jesus and through Satan and uh, being on the cross and staying on the cross and dying. And so God does test and he looks for good or evil. And these tests, we either fail them or we pass the test. God wants all of us to pass the test no matter what the difficulties we go through. Satan wants us to fail all the tests and to really come to hate God and walk away from God. Our next video seminar, as I mentioned, um, is the Song of Solomon. Hope you'll join us for that book. Until the next time, God bless.